It is that time again for a Linux Mint new edition. Linux Mint 20 is what we're covering today. I'm going to go over just a brief thing of the install. Not a lot has changed there, so we're going to zip right through the installation and then just go over a lot of the new features. A lot to cover in this video as we have a lot of cool things that were added with Linux Mint 20. Uh, a lot of people don't like to cover Linux Mint because they find it a little boring as some of the packages run a little older and uh, it's just really stable. So that's also kind of the reason why I recommend you use it because it's a very good distribution. So with all that, let's get on the desktop and get right into it. I do live stream every Monday and Friday. So if you have a question for me, be sure and stop into my Twitch channel and ask me live. And if you'd like to check out these streams after the fact, you can always head over to Chris Titus Tech Streams and check out my entire archive over there. All right, we're gonna actually boot into our drive using just the boot override on our BIOS. So this is a brand new Linux Mint 20 beta USB drive I have. So we're just gonna boot directly to it. So we'll say yes. And here it is. So we can start right here or we can do an OEM install if we'd like, but we'll just go ahead and choose the top option. All right, so I am having some issues with the initial display. I know they did change some displays as far as scaling. I do have like a 4K monitor over here and then also the 1920 input that you guys see. So I do see some issues with the actual initial setup on the beta, but I'm sure this will get ironed out by the final release. Let me uh, go ahead and rectify this. Okay, I've changed my configuration around to be what it should be. Uh, probably just an issue with, I have a really oddball display configuration. So I could imagine something with the new scaling that they've done might've uh, conflicted with my current setup, but that's all right. We just manually put in 1920 in the display settings under system settings. And now we're just going to go through the install process. I always recommend installing multimedia codecs and any third party tools that you need. And we're just going to erase this entire deal and reinstall. I have 1903 on here right now, but we're going to go ahead and erase everything and reinstall. Select our time zone, put all our credentials in, and now it's copying and installing. No differences in the installer. I'm going to go ahead and skip through all of the progress part. All right, now we're finished. Uh, I think this prompt might be new. It says continue testing Linux Mint. So if you didn't want to fully install it, you could just test it using this live environment. But since we've installed it, let's go ahead and hit restart now. I'm going to pull the thumb drive and I'll see you on the desktop of Linux Mint 20. All right, here we go. Looks like Grub installed correctly. Standard splash screen. Doesn't look like it's changed from 19 to 20. And all right, we're on the desktop. I'm going to fix the display again. Uh, had a display issue, but that's all right. All right, there we go. We're on 1920 by 1080 mirrored between all my displays. So that should fix that. Uh, same welcome screen. Let's see. Linux Mint 20, Cinnamon 64 bit. I, I know in uh, Mint 20, I think they dropped uh, support for 32 bit installs, which is honestly not. I don't think anybody's been using a 32 bit computer for like 10 years <laughs> or very few people, I should say. So uh, that's totally okay that that was dropped, first steps. Uh, I did notice that we do have uh, some theming and other things here. I do recommend going through these first steps. Uh, this looks very identical to 19. They might have expanded a little bit. Also, I know they added a little bit of theming on uh, Linux Mint 20 as well. As you see, we've just applied dark mode. Uh, other things with the actual display settings. Let's go into the display so you can see that. They did add like fractional scaling. You can now adjust the refresh rate of your monitor. Uh, some other aspects here that you, you can actually enable. Obviously, I had to change some of this because of my multi-monitor setup I have here. Uh, zoom level. This is that scaling that uh, we were talking about that they've added. So you can actually go high uh, DPI. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see what happens. Does this look okay? It does actually it looks actually a little little sharper to me. There is support for hybrid graphics now, so if you have a laptop with like Nvidia Optimus graphics, you can actually put that in here, and it can intelligently switch between it. Uh, so if you're launching an app that requires that, you can totally do that. 
Uh, otherwise, you can just stay with the integrated graphics on your system. So you now have that option in Linux Mint 20. Uh, as before, I was actually recommending Pop! OS because they had that, I think one of the very first ones to really include hybrid graphics. Another thing is the Warpinator app. Now, Warpinator, send and receive files across the network. This is a peer-to-peer, -peer, basically a local network file share. I actually did this on a live stream where I was sending from here to uh, like my studio PC. Uh, very cool where I could actually Actually just drag and drop files you can you can actually customize this with the, the menu in here just go to preferences you can say hey drop everything in this folder or share everything from this folder and then anybody else running warpinator you can run it in ubuntu and other ones uh, you can actually transfer files back and forth uh, me personally i still like samba just having a unsecured samba share on my local network so i can just drag and drop uh, files at ease but for you that don't have a NAS box and you just have two computers and you just want to transfer from files easily, Warpinator is a really good addition that was added with Linux Mint 20. Other improvements is the Nemo got a little faster. They made some performance increases and tweaks in here. So uh, a little bit snappier, a little bit speedier. Uh, overall, I really like Nemo. It's a, a very solid, I like the fact that uh, probably one of the biggest selling points to me on Mint is the theming and consistency across uh, the platform is very good. So when we just hit dark theme and just had everything move to dark, it's just very, very nice experience all across everywhere. So if I pull up settings, if I pull up uh, other applications, it recognizes that. And it's actually a very good experience. Other things of note, if we do a NeoFetch, you'll notice that we are now on the 5.4 kernel. So uh, much like Ubuntu and Pop! OS, uh, Linux Mint 20 is now on the 5.4 kernel. So more newer hardware and other support is now featured in, in Mint 20. And here is some of the selection we have with Linux Mint. Uh, if you go to this, here we got some new wallpapers that we can actually pick through and select. Uh, me personally, I, I really love this one right here. I've always really enjoyed this uh, mint background, but there's some new ones that uh, I think this one's one of the newer ones for 20. That's also very, very clean. Actually, I think I'm gonna keep that one. That looks uh, pretty nice, but definitely get in here and toy around. Not a whole host of things, but there's one more thing that I absolutely have to tell you about that is why I absolutely have fallen in love with Linux Mint. So the one last thing I wanna to touch on here is snap packages. And the snap packages in Linux Mint are non existent. The developer reason went more over so and said, hey, we're never going to actually force any snaps on you and make sure no snaps are installed in the background, which is really nice because a lot of people using Ubuntu don't realize they remove snaps and then all of a sudden it reinstalls it behind their back because they went to install Chromium or something. And instead of, uh, even though they did an app to install Chromium, it went ahead and converted it to a snap package, installed SnapD, installed the snap Chromium package. Well, Linux Mint team ripped all this out and we don't have to worry about that. And a lot of people are like, why are snaps bad? And I'm like, it's not necessarily that they're bad. They're a little slower, so they're not as performant. And then also uh, it does use a proprietary store that is owned by Canonical, which runs Ubuntu. Uh, no one has access to the store except for them. And it's kind of closed source. So uh, kind of anti-Linux in a lot of ways. So I was really happy to see this from the Linux Mint team. But with all that said, what are your thoughts about Linux Mint 20? Do you like it? Are you looking forward to it? I know it's a bit boring, but I still love it because of its stability. And it's a great base for anybody to build pretty much whatever they want in their Linux. So with that, a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.